Welcome to the Dr. Nikki Star Show, a podcast to support you in your spiritual awakening and personal development. As a spiritual teacher, healer, and intuitive coach, my intention is to empower you to live your ultimate potential and your ultimate life. As a former medical doctor and mystic, my role is to bridge the gap between science and spirituality to support you in understanding more of your multidimensional aspects. I share on a diverse range of topics and it's all to support your greatest becoming. My mission is to continue reaching millions of people for the healing and awakening of humankind for the creation of the new earth. Thank you for being here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Dr. Nikki Star Show. Today, we are here with Genevieve Rockham. I met Genevieve a couple years ago in a mastermind, and I was so impressed and in awe at her money mindset, her beliefs around money, the way she speaks about money. And recently, I was on Instagram, and I was like, I'm going to have Genevieve on here because And she is the author of Sexy Money. And I feel that she has a really beautiful, activating, unique way that really inspires you to like want to talk about money. Like I remember asking her in the master, I'm like, Genevieve, I'd love to hear your riff on this, you know? And so here we are. I'm so happy to be sharing. She's the first episode on money. And so that's really exciting to talk a bit more about conscious money and also how to support it in coming into your life even more. And we decided to call this episode The Money Game because she actually has a program and offer called The Money Game. And I loved that. And so welcome, welcome, beautiful Genevieve. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm like, it's so so funny. You're like, we should call it The Money Game. I was like, aha, perfect. (laughs) Because I mean... Um, I feel like the energy that I bring to money is very, a big element of it is really playful. And for some people, it's very activating when they feel completely removed from that energy with money and, or they're like, how do I get some of that? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I always love listening to talk about money, whether it's in one of your reels, even when we're inside the mastermind. And so I feel like it's one of your gifts. And it seems like you're, you've now niched down really to focus more, even more on money mm-hmm. and you have a best selling book. And so tell us a little bit about whatever you feel called, like what brought you to want to share more on money? Why did you write the book, Sexy Money? What do you feel is like the world, the universe, even this spiritual awakening movement that's happening on the planet? Like, I feel like it's money is a big piece of it. Yeah. And- <laughs> you're adding your flavor to the mosaic. And I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like a lot of people are really called to self-actualize right now. And a part of that self-actualization is, in my opinion, becoming fully resourced and not being, not having a limited experience, ideally. So in being unlimited in your experience to self-actualize you allowing yourself to access abundance and money accordingly so that you're not making decisions or operating out of limitation because when you're operating out of limitation you can't fully self-actualize in the same way and at the same level so um i mean i think money is a big conversation and it's only getting it's only becoming more and more each day right (laughs) i'm sure we've all noticed it excuse me but You know, I I feel like for me specifically, I really want people to understand that you don't just get like get to have like a chill relationship with money that's like calm, fine, whatever. You can have like a really pleasurable one. And I feel like that's the edge on the conversation that I bring forward where it's like money gets to feel fun. Like it feels like a light, playful game. And there's a level of ease there, right? There's a level of it kind of feels like sexy and flirty and not because you're like, Oh my God, I'm so rich. I'm so hot. or whatever. (laughs) But it's, it's more so like there's when you tap into your power and you feel like truly like the creatrix of your life and money is an avenue where and how that flows. There's like, you're accessing your power. You're in like creation energy and that's just kind of (laughs) hot. Oh, sorry. Can I swear? I'm so 
<laughs> you can. I think you can. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't checked. I think it's been fine so far. And I think some people have mentioned things here and there. So what are some other money mentality ways that you share on money that you think is really unique to your method and your way of connecting to money in that sexy way? You know, I'm told almost daily at this point um, by like clients inside the Money Game membership or like in Yay Life and people on the internet who like watch my free stuff that I have a way of speaking to the subtleties and the nuances so that these potentially general concepts on money and money mindset actually click to the individual, right? So it's not just like, oh, money gets to be like, money gets to feel good. And they're like, cool, good to know, right? Like, I can really like navigate a process where I really like drop it in for with specifics, because, you know, I've worked with 1000s of people on money, and like growing their businesses. And like, even when I like coach and mentor people, in business growth and expansion, it's like money is a very big part of that conversation, right? And if we don't, if we're not good with money, it's going to make business hard, <laughs> harder than it has to be. And um, I'm also just told that I make money feel light and like an exhale in the body. Because for a lot of people, you know, obviously money can feel really contractive in the body and really like tight and scary and anxious and whatever. And so it's like when people come into my world and we have these conversations and, you know, they dive into like my teachings, methodologies, riffs, all the things there, it's just, there's like a sequence to it. And people are like, it's almost like you're, you're med like helping, helping me meditate. Like, it's almost like you're helping me. Like, it's like a hypnosis for my brain around money because you can really like just dial it back and reverse engineer to like the very specific types of conversations and thoughts going on in our heads and change it and speak to them. And so it's like, you know, really thorough and nuanced. Whereas I feel potentially other conversations around money can stay more general and it can, in, in that it can feel a little bit more surface. And so it doesn't feel impactful and therefore it doesn't feel helpful or like it works. Absolutely. And I've always been a big, like part of my teachings is that money is spiritual and a big spiritual teacher and activator is money because money actually makes you have to look at all of your stuff, mm -hmm. like all your generational and ancestral stuff. Mm -hmm. You have to look at your karma. You're going to even look at your limiting beliefs because it's not, if you have a limiting belief around money, you probably have limiting beliefs in other areas of your life. And even just like how big you allow yourself to play the game of life. Like, I feel like money is a reflector for so many things. Like even your relationship to like the masculine or the feminine, like some people say money's feminine. Some people say money's masculine. I guess it all depends on your relationship with it. Mm -hmm. And so I feel that because it's a relationship, right? That we're in, we're in a relationship with money. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think? Do you think money is masculine or feminine? I love this question so much. <laughs> I feel like money is a dance. And so I feel like in that there are times where we take, I feel like it's all about maintaining a continuity in the flow energetically with money. And so I feel like in maintaining the continuity in the flow with money, you might have more of a predominant energy that you like to play in and hang out with in money or even like in your partnership. But as you were speaking to money is relational. And so in relationship, it's like, there's a little bit of shape shifting on both sides. And so to me, what I really notice is it's both because <laughs> there's, there's like that dance where, um, I lean back and I allow and I receive, but then there's also like, I create containers and I hold space and I create avenues for money to flow. That's technically a little, a little bit more masculine. Right. Um, and so it's like, to me, it's about engaging in the dance and keeping your hand on the pulse of like, what's the aligned move right here, right now. And when you maintain that continuity and flow, like that ebb and flow creates that, like, you know, like that heartbeat that keeps the blood pumping, so to speak, in the relationship with money and therefore your experience of it with it. Beautiful. So I feel that as people are working through their stuff just spiritually, there is all the stuff that's meant to be worked on in the money realm as well. And I have found with clients so much that there can be almost like a victim energy and like 
almost like it's hard to get out of whatever habits or ways of being or stuckness or cycles around money. And depending on the modality, like for example, as a healer, blocks are removed energetically as well as karmically, et cetera. With your work, and I feel like you are more of like a verbal, like you're really working with mindset. And so it's like a verbal transmission that's then shifting, upgrading belief systems, right? And so what would you say to any people who still are not, I feel like we're always going to keep raising that money goal anyway, but let's say where people don't feel fully satisfied and fulfilled, even though I think for some of us, we're never going to feel fully like satisfied and think like, okay, this is it. This is enough money for me. I think we all know that the sky's the limit. Like why not more? We're tapped into the infinite abundance of the universe. What would you say to people that still feel stuck a bit and feel a bit of a victim to money? Well, I feel like, and this was kind of what we were speaking to a little bit earlier was like with my work, it is verbal um, in how I bring it forward and, um, something that I personally experience and have experienced through my work as well as like my clients, they always talk about how like they shift somatically, like in the body. Right. And I feel like if we're getting caught, uh, the layers that I kind of address like deeper in my body of work is mindset, energetic, and somatic. And so there's like, when we shift in all areas and all aspects, then we create like an actual transformation. There is change that occurs and lasts. But oftentimes if we find ourselves staying stuck in the same pattern, it's because we're not fully shifting it. We might be telling ourselves something else in the mind, but it's like the body's still holding on to something. And that's so common with money. Like like one of the most common things with money where it's like you uh, grew up in scarcity or so there's like a survival wound with money. And so you always feel like you need to chase and you don't feel comfortable or safe to slow down. And so you always need more. And so there's an energy of like, no matter how much I have, it's never enough because it feels like it's so fleeting or it's like falling through my fingertips or, you know, every time I, the, I spend it faster than I can make it, no matter how much I make, it's where the money go, it's disappearing. And it's just like a, for lack of a better term, like a trauma response to money. If we're not if we're not conscious, and so to me, mean conscious means like of the mind and also aware of self and how we're operating. We're not just in these reactionary patterns with money, then it, we can miss it. And it can just feel like these subtle discomforts and then also some chaos in our financial experience. Even if you are making a lot, I've worked with a lot of people who are millionaires, multimillionaires, and they're like, yeah, you should see my bank account. And I'm like, nothing I haven't seen. And they're like, $7. And I'm like, yeah, you know, like there's some shit going on. Let's fucking figure it out. <laughs> I love you. You're like, oops. <laughs> Stop it. I find it good, actually. I, not, I, I don't swear in my teachings, but I do catch when I'm listening to people who do, it makes me laugh. And laughing is such a way to dismantle the ego. And I do mm-hmm. think that so many of our stuck, patterns of hiding or playing small or not living our fullest potential like Mm -hmm. the ego can work both ways like it's sneaky it can keep us small keep us stuck and the moment we laugh that's that's like one of the biggest spiritual tools to help people ascend and shift patterns so i Mm -hmm. i like it i think it's funny (laughs) Uh, okay i think it's I hope it's okay. I'm not going to respectful to obviously the space I'm in. Yeah, I'm so. So, my next question around, and and I just feel also like I do think some of our deepest healing can happen because we're still coming out of the old paradigm where there's a lot of these collective conscious beliefs that. Like, for example, money and time are attached or like you have to work hard for your money. There's even like working class collective consciousness or even ideas of suffering or you have to pay your dues. Like all of this stuff that was part of even like the Great Depression era. And and there is that generational link that we can inherit belief systems from our family, et cetera. And I feel like a lot of your... I feel like your teachings would be mainly addressing 
I guess like, how do you address that? Because I know, let's say like the way I do energy work is I would go back and have them disconnect from those patterns on an energetic level. And so how do you address that on the teaching or the riff level? You just Mm -hmm. speak into those beliefs and just create the new ones. So, I mean, it, it kind of depends on who I'm talking to and, um, this is why like one of my money courses that's more about like the like fundamental and foundational work with money there's it depends on where you're at and that determines what you do because like a one size fits all approach like this is why some people come into money work and they're like this didn't work for me all this did was like trigger me activate me bring me bring up all my stuff and now i just feel all dysregulated and kind of messed up right and so um you know i know for me personally when I first started doing this work on myself and cause like, this is not something where it's like, I've never had a problem with money ever. Like, sorry for you guys. I'm just teaching you from perfection land over here. Um, I started with a lot of anxiety and a lot of scarcity programming with money. And it wasn't just mental. It was real. It was tangible. It was like actual experiences I had and grew up around as well as um, it was like a very visceral, real response in my body. And that was programmed from how I grew up, from my parents' beliefs and, you know, so on and so forth. But ultimately for me, there was a starting point where it's like I had to be able to enter a state of regulation to then address the work because I was operating originally at a point where if I would think about money, it would have a panic attack, (laughs) you know? And so I was like, I was like, when you're at that level, when you're like level 11 (laughs) in a response like that having a conversation might not be helpful. There's just like a, and and this is something that I speak to in my body of work and address so that it really can work for people at so many different levels um, in their response to money. And so I feel like what the work that I really focus on with people is helping them understand and identify their current level of reaction and how to tend to it and meet it in the moment. And so when you know how to meet it, then you know what the, what the move is. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I also feel though there can just be like a general riff on, you know, let's say for me, like I feel that a big part of this evolutionary jump in humanity Mm -hmm. is the shift from what we can say the old paradigm to the new paradigm. Mm -hmm. And even though there are certain systems and there was some depression around money and there are all these scarcity programmings we get to just disconnect and know that we're tapped into the infinite abundance of the universe Mm -hmm. and that this new paradigm of relating doesn't matter what anyone else is living we get to decide that we're stepping into the paradigm of abundance into Mm -hmm. the fact that knowing that money is here to support us, like these general foundational beliefs that when people are letting go, I think a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we have to step into this new way of relating to money. Or mm-hmm. like you said, like your business is just not going to work. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, I got lucky because when I was in medical school, I worked as like a cocktail waitress and, and we could just make as much money as we wanted to really, because it just depended on how many tips we got. So that was like my first experience of detaching like time for money. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, if I don't have a job that has a salary, then I can really make as much money as I want. Mm -hmm. And that was like my first step into entrepreneurship, even though, you know, I was working like multiple different kinds of, you know, I was a teaching assistant, I was doing the waitressing, I was doing all these different things. And then even though as a doctor, I was going to step into a salary job that still made multiple six figures. Looking back, it was like, oh, yeah, well, I could still make like multiple six figures in a month, whereas as a doctor, I would have made that in a year. Mm -hmm. And so there is this capacity, and I think it's super important for entrepreneurs to really stretch what they believe is possible around Mm -hmm. money. And 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 I want to even extend that beyond entrepreneurs to have the masses start to understand this because, and I know it can be triggering. I remember that when I had called my mother to tell her I had had a hundred thousand dollar a month, my (laughs) aunt and her cousin were there. And I I feel like my aunt left the room because she makes less than that in one year. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And so it was like so triggering for mm-hmm. like, I remember my family being like, don't, why did you post that on the internet? And then other friends being like, you know, I think it takes away the power to like say that. And it's like, what? Like, <laughs> we're expanding potential here. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I do feel like on a collective conscious level, like what would you say to the paradigm that we're expanding into and our potential as creators, entrepreneurs, and just humans in general, because we know we don't even have to work for money technically, you know? You know yeah. And I, I hear what you're speaking to. I think there's a, I think there's a level of more of dismantling what has kept us from being the truth of who we really are, which is infinitely capable, infinitely resourceful, infinitely resourced. And so I feel like capacity, when we talk about capacity, there's kind of a conversation where it's like, how much am I willing to let in? Right. And so how much am I willing to let in? There's an implication in that, that there's always more. And so in always more that speaks to a level of infinite receiving that we can tap into. And so there's, Something that I, I say to my clients is like, it's not necessarily about having the most money in the bank out of anyone or everyone. It's about having access to whatever you want, whenever you want. And so that, that like the energy of like withdrawing from the universe's ATM whenever you want. So you, all, you have as much in the bank as you want. You're infinitely supported. Like your lifestyle is your body of work, who you are in this world, who you desire to be in this world. And it's not limited by money. And so capacity is the conversation on how much do we feel safe, comfortable, worthy, whatever, of allowing into our experience right here, right now. And that's what we're a match to. And there is an experience. There's like kind of two uh, conversations I have with money in my world. One is like more of a linear belief system, doing like that fundamental relational work. And there's also a quantum conversation, which is like, it, it's it's more about capacity, less about time it's about what you're a match to not what this plus this equals that it's it's less linear it's more quantum right and so in that conversation and in that experience of quantum manifestation it's it's the understanding that in infinite resources and allowing yourself to be infinitely resourced you simply pluck what you want from the universe kind of and you choose what you want you decide you decide what you want and what you're a match to is what you experience and it fits within the the frame of capacity that we can get behind whether because we directly believe it and have intentionally gotten to be a match to that or there's just a level of like I don't have to intentionally work myself into alignment but I can hold my frame when it comes like within this level of capacity and I won't collapse or whatever yeah. And, and I would say, what would you say is the work to expand capacity? I agree. You mentioned some that I agree, which is like mm-hmm. upping your worthiness, um, your deservingness, et cetera. And, and I guess from like, I, I, I work with quantum energy, so I'm literally just like increasing deserving <laughs> 10, 20, 30. People. So like, what would you do in terms of um, supporting people to expand that capacity because it's what's funny and sneaky about even desire and worthiness is on a conscious level and even those of us that are operating at these more quantum levels like Mm -hmm. I know in my mind like the conscious mind knows like I know I'm worthy I know I am deserving and then when you're like yeah okay so I know that I'm a billionaire so then where's the disconnect And, and then on another level it's like okay the nervous system has to be able to hold it. Some people might say it like that, or like you say, it's that capacity to be able to let it all in. So it's like how, you know, the how questions it's like, Mm -hmm. and I know that viewers and listeners are thinking that, well, okay, yeah, I want that. I want to increase my capacity. And so what work do you usually recommend about around worthiness, deservingness and expanding capacity? Well, I feel like it's about putting yourself in the space to Put yourself in the space that'll trigger you, (laughs) honestly, like not dysregulate you or completely mess you up, but there's a level of like, be willing to put yourself in a situation where you're like, am I worthy of this? Do I deserve this? Put yourself in a space where you're like, is this even possible? (laughs) Because when you're, when you're in that room and you're playing in that arena at that level, that game, if you will, (laughs) haha. then then 
you have, you, you get to show yourself what you're made of more or less. And you get to like show your body that it's safe to be there or that even if you feel unsafe there, you still are. Even if you feel unworthy of being in that room there, you still are in that room anyways. And so there's a level of like, you know, I was talking about, I was talking about this money game membership yesterday where it's like what teaches a, a big part of the experience of expanding capacity is safety and like feeling safe in the body. And so there's a level of like, can I hold this experience and not collapse? Can I hold this experience and not, you know, pull myself out or shrink or whatever, or contract. And so it's, it's not about not having these feelings. It's not about not feeling worthy or not having these things arise, but it's like about allowing, not allowing those emotions to cause you to create a smaller container for yourself. And it's like that conscious choice in the moment where it's like, oh, I'm, I don't feel worthy in this room right now. And then it's like, oh, well, that, that'll probably change, right? <laughs> Instead of it being like, oh, no, <sighs> let's, let's get out of the room, you know, or like, let's, let's shrink, let's play smaller. Let's, you know, as an extension of not feeling worthy in that moment, let's take less risk, let's take up less space, let's share our message quieter, let's stop sharing it all together. These things have an impact. And so I feel like the biggest way is in showing yourself that you can handle the duality of experiencing these emotions whilst simultaneously um, a lot of them will leave you when you just take up more space in your life, when you occupy your life fully. And to me, that's about fully going for it, like really being who you came here to be, showing yourself what's possible and available by going for it and just at least giving yourself the chance to see what you can create financially, to see what you can create in terms of an impact in your body of work or through your business. And when you put yourself in like that new realm, there's, you know, like beyond the comfort zone, there's a level of like playing on your own personal leading edge and playing on your own personal leading edge is where your capacity will automatically expand because it can't not stay the same. Like it can't stay the same when you're playing there, you know? Absolutely. And as you're speaking, what's coming to my consciousness is I'm seeing and thinking of clients when they have talked about feeling overwhelmed and the moment you say you're overwhelmed it's like no don't do that because you're going to shrink your capacity versus being like I feel this and affirming I can handle it mm -hmm. I can handle it and I feel like that's one like very tangible way so whether it's client load or a day that seems very busy in terms of things that are being done um the moment you affirm it's too much or too overwhelming or whatever, that's shrinking the capacity. And those yeah. are the muscles to work. And I do think that there's a way to do less and receive more. So there is a refinement of realizing, okay, what is busy work? What is not? Mm -hmm. And the other thing that was coming to mind as you were sharing too, just to add on to that is like you were saying, like really going for it. I find that the actions that directly correlate to you creating the channels with which to receive the money. So for example, like sales, when people are like, I don't know if I'm selling too much. I don't know if that's too many emails, et cetera, et cetera. That is you being uncertain of that taking up of space. And I find that going for it is really like whatever intuitive nudges, whatever, if you're inspired to send 10 emails, you send 10 emails, like whatever your creative force is guiding you to do and really being unapologetic about that. And um, it can trigger others, but also as, as we're rising, ascending, shifting vibrations, like we can't help that. And the more that we can just hold our field and decide like, this is what I'm going for, whatever it takes to get there. Mm -hmm. and, and honoring that versus feeling like, oh no, is this too much? Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, maybe that's too many times or, or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. So any other riffs? So in our bonus, of course, we're going to be sharing some more tips on, on money and capacity and all the different things to support you more of like the how to is more of the tangible, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I do love your riffs, Genevieve. So I feel like if, before you share where to, people can find you, if there's any riff that you feel inspired to or called to share that can support people in stepping into this new paradigm of money and really seeing it from this place of lightness, of something we all deserve and are worthy of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I feel like the two and two 
continue the conversation off what you were bringing forward a moment ago, something that I've really noticed over the years, both in myself as I expanded my own capacity, as well as like the many of clients that I've supported in this work, the two biggest blocks, <laughs> if you will, is changing the energy of abundance into something else. And so it's, you know, in alignment with the capacity conversation, there's a level of like, how long can I stay in the energy of abundance? When do I need to change it? And so often it's changed to lack or overwhelm. And those are like the two like opposite ends of the spectrum. And it's like, if it's lack, it's not enough. There's a, you know, not enough type of feeling. And that creates that like chasing type of energy. Usually there's a survival wound that we need to process out of the body. Um, or the energy of overwhelm, which is making something that is abundance into a sensation of too much, like kind of like what you were speaking to. When we change the energy of a lot into too much, then we decide that we can't hold it and handle it. And, you know, it, it's just a way to subtly disconnect or disassociate from abundance because on some level, some part of us is uncomfortable holding abundance in that moment. And so we look to separate ourselves from it, disconnect from it, contract and let in less. And it is a capacity issue. It's a capacity edge. And so the question I want to bring forward to you is like, how good are you willing to let it get? And in that conversation, there is a, you could look at your bank account and be like, oh, it says X amount of dollars instead of oh, like, it should be more that you're changing the energy. You're, you're not being with abundance in that moment, whether it's a dollar or a million dollars or $10 million, it doesn't matter. Abundance is abundance. And as soon, and something that I say a lot in my world is like, we can only compound the energy we're already in. And so if we're in lack and you're trying to go chase, get abundance, you're not going to acquire something sustainable, lasting, or substantial. And equally in an energy of overwhelm, <laughs> you find yourself chron usually typically chronically overstimulated, unclear, ungrounded, and it's a way to knock yourself down a peg because there's some part of you that's like, I don't feel good about this. You know, even in, so since we last hung out, I'm now a mom and I'm like, no. <laughs> and so I have a baby, I have a husband, I have a family, I have a business, I have amazing friends, I'm living where I want to live, I have amazing family, like, my life is so full and I could easily be like, there's so much. And it's like, why would I do that? Like, why would I change the, why would I make the fact that I literally have every single thing in my life that I want into too much? Like I literally wanted every single one of these at some point in time. I knew I wanted to be a mom. I knew I wanted to be married. I knew like all of these things and I could be like, Oh my gosh, it's not just single Genevieve anymore. <laughs> Childless Genevieve. But I'm like, this is good. This is like, this is what I wanted. I want it. Like, the overwhelm of getting on stage for the first time and speaking, oh my God, oh my God, this is too much. And it's like, this is what you wanted though. Like step up, you got this, like rise, like step into it. This is who you are. This is who you came to be. Like, it's not, sometimes I almost wonder if that feeling of too much is, this is too much for me. Am I not enough for this? And, or is like, am I not, is this too much? Am I not enough? or even am I too much for this experience? I think about the conversation on, you know, clients have told me before, they're like, I have a fear of responsibility. Like, I, I don't want to deal with these elements of running a really big business. And I was like, your fear isn't fear of responsibility. It's actually a fear that you're irresponsible. And you're not, you know, and so it's like when we these blanket statements, <laughs> when we actually like break them down. It's like, Oh, I'm, I'm healed. I'm healed. <laughs> exactly. And I wanted to say to that, that no matter the level of wealth and abundance and finance and the money that we're receiving, there is the way the human brain, at least the monkey mind, ego part that is not serving us, it's trying to keep us safe, will always find some kind of problem. So I do want to remind people that it never ends. Like I thought like, I, I couldn't even believe, I remember as I was stepping into bigger levels, I used to want to hide the fact that I had money or that I was living in Malibu because I'm like, they're going to charge me more. They're going to take advantage of me. 
And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm blocking my own uh, even more abundance from coming in because I have these fears that I'm going to be taken advantage of. And then here I am like, I'm not going to tell them I live in Malibu till after they give me the quote, you know? And so it was really interesting to witness that and just see like, oh my gosh, like that level of self-awareness to keep ourselves at that capacity to keep receiving even more is so required and, and to continue to do the work. It's like continuing to pull the weeds in the garden. You're building your garden of abundance. Like you will have to continue to pull the weeds. And I feel it's like, just like our healing or transformation. I also think our money work is a never ending journey. As long as it's a part of this 3d reality, we're in the money game. <laughs> <laughs> where can people find you or if they want to continue the money game journey with you I love when you just bring it full circle um so I hang out on Instagram mostly but I have been known to hang out on TikTok from time to time or also Facebook but I'm Genevieve Rackham on Instagram also on TikTok and also on Facebook <laughs> Beautiful. So you can find her there and we will see you inside the bonus content. Thank you, Genevieve, so much for being here and we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Dr. Nikki Star Show. Please like this podcast and share it with anyone you feel would benefit. Subscribe to the podcast to receive bonus content. And remember, every Monday, the video version goes live on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being on the Ascension Path with me and for doing this great work.